pleased to recognize the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move second reading of Bill 78, an act to amend various acts with respect to the publication of notices in newspapers. Ms. Gamari has moved second reading of Bill 78, an act to amend various acts with respect to the publication of notices in newspapers. Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for her presentation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand here today in the Legislature to talk about my first private member's bill, Supporting Ontario's Community Rural and Agricultural Newspapers Act. <clears throat> Community newspapers bring high-value engagement and trust to all levels of government messaging, federal, provincial, regional and municipal. 82% of Ontario citizens read their local community newspapers. Community newspapers like the Manatic Messenger and Ottawa Community Voice in my riding of Carleton are the voice of their community and strong contributors to their local economies. Community newspapers are aligned with our provincial government's mandates to help create jobs, to save taxpayer money, and to reduce red tape for small businesses. In a December 2016 research poll, when almost 2,500 Canadians were asked the question, which of the listed media do you think are the most appropriate for advertising for federal, provincial, and municipal or regional government programs and services? 72% of respondents, or almost three quarters, said that they want to see advertising for government programs and services in their local newspapers. In smaller markets with a population of less than 10, with a population of less than 100,000 people, <clears throat> six in 10 or approximately 60% of adults believe that community newspapers are the most appropriate media for government advertising. Indeed, Ontario's community newspapers are lucky to be supported and represented by the Ontario community newspaper industry, and I'm glad that I was joined earlier today by Caroline Medwell, the executive director of the Ontario Community Newspaper Association. <clears throat> This proposed private member's bill has its roots in my riding of Carleton. This issue was originally brought to my attention by Mr. Jeffrey Morris, who owns two local community newspapers, the Manatic Messenger in my riding of Carleton and the Barhaven Independent in Minister McLeod's riding of uh, uh, Nepean. With the past purchase of the free Metroland News and its subsequent shutdown of its local community editions, independently owned community newspapers are vitally important sources of information in Carleton and in other rural and northern communities throughout Ontario. They are also relied upon by many immigrant and new Canadian communities as crucial sources of local, non-traditional English news. The proposed changes will help ensure the viability of these newspapers, enabling them to continue to bring their communities together and to provide residents with crucial local news. Turning now to the content of my private member's bill, municipalities are required to post notice to the public for relevant community works, events, consultations and other things. These notices are often required to be tendered to the public via postings in community newspapers. The current definition of newspaper in the Legislation Act reads as follows. Newspaper in a provision requiring publication means a document that is printed in sheet form, published at regular intervals of a week or less, and circulated to the general public, and b consists primarily of news of current events of general interest. This definition of a newspaper contained within the Legislation Act 2006 is the standard used by municipalities for the purpose of providing public notice in the following acts. The City of Toronto Act, the Development Charges Act, the Environmental Assessment Act, the Expropriations Act, the Municipal Act, the Ontario Heritage Act, and the Planning Act. <clears throat> Increasingly, Community newspapers, particularly those in northern and rural Ontario, are published on a bi-weekly or monthly basis because of the disastrous policies made by the previous government, such as increasing red tape, increasing hydro bills, and increasing their overall bottom line, which has led for many of them to uh, look at cost-cutting efforts in order to maintain their small, independently-owned businesses. 
by limiting their publications to bi-weekly or monthly. Municipalities are not able to post notice in these local publications anymore because they do not fit the standard definition of newspaper. So not only are these community newspapers losing out on a potential source of revenue that would help support local businesses, but it also makes it difficult for municipalities to inform local populations of relevant local news. And to fix this problem, Madam Speaker, I am proposing to add the following definition of newspaper to the acts that I previously mentioned. Newspaper, in a provision requiring publication, means a document that is printed in sheet form published at regular intervals of a month or less and circulated to the general public and consists primarily of news of current events of general interest. By amending the City of Toronto Act, the Development Charges Act, the Environmental Assessment Act, the Expropriations Act, the Municipal Act, the Ontario Heritage Act and the Planning Act to include this updated definition to reflect uh, publications of a month or less as opposed to weekly or less, I'm hoping to strengthen the fabric of Ontario's rural, northern and immigrant communities while at the same time supporting local businesses and ensuring that Ontarians continue to have easily accessible news resources. And to clarify, Madam Speaker, this change does not mandate that municipalities must now provide notice in all of these papers. All it does is broaden the scope of potential newspapers. Municipalities can still pick and choose which paper they wish to provide notice in. The requirement that municipal notices be posted in newspapers with a publishing frequency of weekly or less has prevented many smaller local community newspapers from being able to post these municipal notices, putting them at a competitive disadvantage. Amending the definition of newspaper to those which have a publishing frequency of a month or less will help even out the playing field for many local community newspapers, and it could add to their bottom line. It would also save municipalities money, as they could specifically target the areas in which they must post notice, as opposed to publishing in a larger newspaper which has many readers to which the notice may be irrelevant. And note that the majority of these local community newspapers are free. Therefore, the proposed changes will also save many Ontarians from having to purchase a newspaper just to get relevant and important local community information as it pertains to municipal notices, since they will be able to get that same information for free in the community newspapers that they already rely upon. I have received broad support for this private member's bill from key stakeholders across Ontario. And I would like to take a moment to read a letter of support provided to me by Ottawa's Mayor Jim Watson. On January 21, 2019, Mayor Watson wrote, I am writing to request that the province amend the definition of newspaper to allow for a broader range of options for municipalities to provide public notice to residents as required under various Ontario statutes. With consolidation in the newspaper industry, this leaves the City of Ottawa with few options to post public notice required by various laws. <clears throat> I ask that you consider broadening the legislation's requirements from a weekly frequency. This would allow municipalities to advertise in a broader range of local and community newspapers, some of which publish every two weeks. This would enable us to more effectively reach more residents and communities and support local newspapers while fulfilling statutory public notice requirements. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank Caroline Medwell and everyone from the Ontario Community Newspaper Association for their support. I'd like to thank Mr. Jeffrey Morris for bringing this issue to me in the first place, and I'd like to thank everyone here today for, um, for joining me in this debate, and I hope that uh, after listening to my comments that everyone in the House can join me in supporting Ontario's Community, Rural and Agricultural Newspapers Act in the Legislature. Thank you.